Hello there, my name is Chris Kirkwell from the Solution Engineering team here at Redgate Software and in this video I want to take a quick look at our SQL Data Catalog solution. So a SQL Data Catalog is a great way to keep a record of exactly what data you've got stored across your enterprise, especially if you want to keep track for compliance purposes. Think of it like a way to apply extra metadata to your schema. So you know exactly what's in which column. And maybe you might think, okay, this particular regulation, this applies to that specific type of data. So we're going to make sure that that is tracked, make sure that we know what we're doing with that, make sure that we know exactly how we're going to handle it and integrate this, I guess, intelligence piece as part of the process. So in this video, I want to have a look at the solution and actually show you essentially how it looks and feels, how we might use this in a day-to-day -day and how we can incorporate this as part of a compliance or especially data masking or obfuscation piece of work. All right then, so let's jump straight in. This is a virtual machine I'm hosting and right here I have a install of SQL Data Catalog. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do right off the bat is jump into the taxonomy tab. Right here is where you see essentially your fields that you're going to apply to your data set. So this is more or less what we provide out the box. It is essentially a list of, I guess you would call them categories that we want to apply to our data set. And then on the right, we have the actual tags that we want to apply as part of those categories. So what we provide is a best guess, but the strength of this really is in defining it for your own environment. Uh, this category and taxonomy system is only really strong if it's flexible. For example, what you might say is actually some of these aren't particularly relevant for me. Maybe we only have one jurisdiction, for example, so I actually don't need all of these extra tags. So it's very easy to change. All I'm gonna do is take the pieces that aren't relevant and get rid of them. Or maybe if I think that the whole category itself is irrelevant, then again, we can downsize very easily. And of course, if we want to go the other way and decide that we want to incorporate another category, another way of classifying, then I can do just that. And I'm going to do that quite simply by hitting new category and creating something. I'll go with uh, classified by. We're going to keep a record in our process, let's say, of who has classified what. The checkbox down below tells you whether you want to allow the application of multiple tags. In this case, that doesn't really make sense because only one person really decides what is going to be classified, so I'm going to leave it blank. But I could have checked that, and that's very, very important if we have a field that can be applied, I guess, multiple times. If you think about this in akin to, I guess, a great big filing cabinet where you might put things in certain places, one of the strength of this kind of systems is that you can essentially put things in multiple places at once just by applying multiple tags. So we have that ability to use a multi-valued approach. Again, in this case, I'm going to say, okay, no, we only want one tag applied to each column. So I'll add a new tag. I'll go with myself, Chris. And then I'm going to go with my teammate, Alex. And finally, I might say that I'll go with Jen as well. All right, so I've added my new category there. And that is essentially an added element onto my taxonomy as a whole. When I'm happy with this, when we've defined exactly what we want that to look like, it's time to start applying that to a system. 
So let's go back to the main screen and we get there in the catalog tab. And what you see here are two tiles, each representing a separate instance. So we're going to want to focus down onto the database level. Let's go to see all of the databases that I have. You see the wheel right here. This essentially is almost like a progress bar telling you just how much of this schema you have covered. For example, my DM database, this is what I'm going to have a look at now. You can see that I've actually only really approached a small section of this. So let's have a closer look and see if we can flesh that out a bit more. All right. This here is a list then of all the columns I have in this database. And then on the right, we have the tags that we've already applied. You might recognize them from the taxonomy view just now. So the idea loosely is we take one of these, for example, my customer email, and we classify it. So in this case, I'm gonna select the elements on the right that are relevant. Uh, so let's go with that and that and I'll say it's relevant under this regulation. I'll say it's in scope. I'll say it's classified by myself. Uh, it has this identifier and so on and so forth. And when I'm happy, simply hit apply. And that is the process essentially done, I guess, for this column. But of course, I want to now approach the rest of these. Fortunately, we can be quite systematic here. For example, I can take the checkbox and just apply it multiple times. So we could go with first name and last name at the same time and now go through the same process. So hit the, the relevant application box. And so effectively bulk apply in that way. But if we want to maybe search through some of this and start to look at fields that have the same column header, well, here I can search in for the, the relevant string. So here I've used name that appears in all these locations. So again, I could check off all of these and then apply the relevant tag. Or instead of doing that, I might want to use the actual tags I've already applied. So I can filter by tags or by data type. Or probably the most useful one I find is this with no tags. What that means is I can very quickly find those that haven't been classified at all. So that's now showing me those that haven't been classified. And so I can just focus on these. And even if I do have things that aren't particularly relevant, let's say that uh, this customer data field actually doesn't need to have a classification put against it. It doesn't fit into my process. Well, I find that the, the customers get on best if they have something like a out of scope field that they can apply which means that they can actually apply that field to that removing it from my with no tags list which means again i can quickly focus down and just make sure that everything has been covered very important if we're going through this for a uh, compliance exercise Or the final way that we have of being able to apply things in bulk is by looking at suggestions. Essentially, we can do some pattern matching based upon the column headers to create a way of systematically suggesting to us rules that might be applicable. So in this case, we can see the pattern, what that's matched against and the column name and then the actual tags that will be applied here when I confirm these. And so if we have a look at our database now, this is looking a lot more fleshed out.
What's really cool about those rules is that they can all be defined yourself in a little bit more detail. So for example, here, credit cards, uh, you can see all of the different patterns that we use on the out the box credit card rule, but you can add to this, include your own. And of course, add in the actual suggested tags that you want to apply to that as well. The final thing I'll highlight here is the ability to essentially use an API to integrate this with automated systems or in integrate this into scripts, I guess. I've seen some incredible things done here. For example, a release process that only actually releases a change if the columns have all been tagged in the development system. Or we're seeing some very nice things come out at the moment with the rule suggestions options. So you can use these to help build up your data masking rule set. So that's a quick look at SQL Data Catalog. If you have any questions at all, well, the best place to go is either the Redgate website, posting a comment down below, or you can always email me at chris.curswell at red-gate.com or look me up on LinkedIn. Hope you found that useful. All the best.